Seadream, the new image model that many are calling the Nano Banana Killer, is now in N8N. Because if you missed it, Google's Nano Banana has been the world's best image model for the past few days now. But by Tans, the company behind TikTok just released Seadream 4.0, who is now threatening to take that crown. And so in this video, not only will we show how to use both image models in N8N, but we also share six creative use cases for these state-of-the-art AI models and compare which one comes out on top. Let's get started. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I run my own AI agency and also founded the RoboNuggets community, our education arm, with several hundred students now who are all AI creators across the world. And here, our mission is simple, is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless what your background is. With a wealth of lessons that we have here in the classroom, which a lot of members join for, but most people stay because of the strong community that we have built. So for a bit of context before we dive into this workflow, if you remember, just a few weeks ago, Google released their Nano Banana image model, which dominated AI news because of how good it is with when it comes to character consistency. But just days after that release, ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, just released Seadream 4.0, which is a state-of-the-art image model that is now slowly closing in on Nano Banana on the artificial analysis leaderboards and also in the LM Arena leaderboards. And if you're new and you don't know what those are, they're basically initiatives where you can blind vote between different models so that we have a crowdsourced ranking of which models are best. Now, an interesting parallel that I noticed is that this actually happened before. If you remember when Vio was released, the was also by Google. Just a few days after, ByteDance also released Seadance, which is their video model that is actually competing against VO in quality. And now just a few months after, history seems to have repeated itself. So the big question in everyone's minds is, number one, which one of these great image models is better, which we will answer in this video. And number two, can we now use these two powerful models in N8N in order to automate them? And for this question, the answer is actually yes, you can now use these models in N8N. So for this video, what we'll be doing is to test these two models side by side across six different use cases and also show how to use Seadream and also Nano Banana in N8N through this model testing workflow. And as a bonus, after we generate those images through these models, we will also animate them using VO Tree to show how they translate to video. And by the way, this model testing workflow that I built, you will probably see again soon when OpenAI makes their move, which seems to be coming soon. So I'll talk more about that near the end. And if you need a shortcut and need this template, which you can just import into N8N instantly, plus all the resources around this video, you can just find it in our community that is linked below. But all right, so now I have the six use cases as well as the reference images loaded in this Google Sheet, which I have linked to this automation. And so when we execute this workflow to create those images, and once that is done, we can now review the results and I can also take you through each of the nodes in this workflow so you can understand how it works. So the first use case we'll review is user-generated content or UGCs. And for this one, we use this image as our reference and we ask the models to create a photo where this model is showing this Venada sparkling wine to the camera in her car. And these are the results. And by the way, we also ran that workflow three times as well, just so we have more material to review. But here you can see Nano Banana versus Seadream. The images they generated are actually quite different. So it depends what you're after. But I would say that for this one, Seadream is definitely the winner for me. Because if you just zoom in here, it's not only able to capture the fact that we wanted this actor to be doing sort of a selfie for UGC content, but you can see even the bottle itself, the lighting across three of these are pretty good. Meanwhile, for Nano Banana, it's still quite good. But you can see the difference here is that it's a bit more zoomed out versus what Seadream outputs. And there's actually a very specific reason as to why that is, which I can probably best explain once I get through how we're using these models in N8N in the first place. And so if we look through this automation, it's a very simple one where we have this Google Sheet as our starting point. And if I open this, you'll see that we just have it linked to our Google Sheet, which is this one that we were viewing from earlier. And all we did here is to load all of this information into N8N. And then for each of those six items, which are corresponding to the six use cases that we are going to review, we just pass them into to this sub workflow for Nano Banana and this other sub workflow for Seadream. So if you go to Seadream first, since that's the topic of this video, you'll see that if we open that, it basically gave us the output of those six image files, some of which we've already shown. But if we click on this view sub execution, that will now take us to this sub workflow where you can see that we are accessing Seadream via KAI. And KAI is an AI model aggregator, sort of like an app store, but for AI models. And we feature them a lot in this channel because they're actually very quick in updating their model offerings. Plus they're offering it at 
really low costs. So you can see there's a lot of models here, but Sea Dream, I believe, was released yesterday. So if you go to API Market, you'll be able to find it here. And here on the Playground tab, you can actually test this out. And you can also see that it costs 3.5 credits to run. And in US dollar terms, that's around 0 0.017 cents. So almost two cents, which is very, very cheap. And the other great thing about Sea Dream is that you can actually define the aspect ratio of the output for this model natively. And so to use this in N8N and other automation tools, you can basically read through this API tab, which I've already done. And so back to our sub workflow for Sea Dream, you can see that we are just using an HTTP request node, which is the primary way in N8N by which you can call on third party models. And here you can see we're using key AI. And if we go to the body itself, you'll see that we are using Sea Dream v4 as a model. And so if we expand this. What we have here is KAI's structure that it wants whenever we use their automation. And it's very simple where we are passing along a prompt here, which if you read through this, that's the prompt that we have in our Google Sheet from earlier, specific to the UGC ad that we just created. And then we're passing along this image URL, which if we go to this link in our browser, you'll see that's just our reference image that we showed. And then finally, we are passing along our image size, which we also declared in our Google Sheet earlier. So this is going to be a portrait image, which is the reason why in our final output earlier, we were able to get these portrait images images natively. And so that's the request that we passed. And here we just have a wait node while C Dream is generating those images for us. So we've set this for 60 seconds. And then we just have a final node here to get the images once they are finished. And with Key AI, again, if you read through their documentation, it tells you that your images will be available in this URL and you just need to provide them your task ID, which is a unique identifier specific to the image that you were generating. And when this node ran, the output of Key AI for you will be this piece of text, which is kind of messy. And so we just have this final edit fields node here, which if we open that, all it really does is get this result URL, which maps to this .png image file. And so when this node ran, all it did is just get those final files that it now returns to our main workflow here. And so back to our main workflow, if I open this, you'll see that we now have these images as output. So if I just copy this and place it in a browser tab, you'll find that that is where we got our images in the first place. So that is actually how you use C Dream. These final two nodes are just optional. I added this in because I wanted to load those images directly into box.com just so they're easier to download for me. But obviously you can use other storage options for this depending on what you commonly use. So that's the one for Sea Dream. Now for Nano Banana, if I open this sub workflow, you'll see that it mirrors what we had for Sea Dream as well. And so if we go to this sub execution, it is very much similar to what we had with Sea Dream earlier. And you can see we are also accessing this model via Key AI. And so back at Key AI, if you search for Nano Banana, you'll be able to find it here. And same with Sea Dream, you can also try it out in this playground. And here with Key AI, if you scroll down, they actually have an offering here to select the image size for Nano Banana. And if you've used Nano Banana before, you may have realized that they actually don't support selecting the aspect ratio natively. And so what KAI has done here is whenever you select a specific image size, what they're doing is they're using a secondary reframe API to expand that image and fill in that whole 9x16 portrait photo. And so this is the reason why in Nano Bananas images earlier, whenever you try to force a 9x16 image because they don't natively support it, what KAI has done here is take the Nano Banana generation, which is probably the image here at the center, and use an external reframe API to expand that to fill the whole screen, which is why it looks like it's zoomed out. They didn't specifically say which reframe API it is, but if I were to guess, it's probably Luma Labs if you're interested in which one they used. But that's important, right? Because here you can already see that one of the benefits behind Sea Dream is the fact that it can natively support 9x16 portrait images. And so you don't have these sorts of problems where you'll need to rely on a secondary model, which may be not as effective as Nano Banana. And another thing to point out is if you're using Nano Banana and selecting an aspect ratio here, it will actually cost you two cents in KAI, which is slightly more more expensive versus Sea Dream, which is a bit less than two cents. But in any case, in my opinion, if you're to use Nano Banana in an automation, this instance by KAI is probably your best bet. And so to use it, same as before, you just go to the API tab and read through this documentation, which I've already done. And so now if we go back to our sub workflow, you'll see that we just have our create image HTTP request here, which again, we're requesting from KAI. So their URL is the same. But if we scroll down to our request itself, you'll see that the structure is slightly different because that is just based on KAI's documentation. But you do have the model declaration still here. You have the prompt, you have the image reference, 
and you also have the image size here. And so when that request was passed, we once again have a few wait nodes here in order to wait for the generation to finish. And another benefit to Seadream is that it's actually faster in generating those images. And so with Nano Banana, I needed to duplicate these wait nodes because when I was testing this out, sometimes I found the images were not yet finished by using just one minute wait node. And so if I open this, this one is set for 60 seconds and the second wait node is also set at 60 seconds. Just to make sure that the images are already done by the time we get to the get image node, which is the same that we had before with Seadream. And finally, once those images are generated, we just return them back to the main workflow like we did earlier. And so if we open this .png file, you'll find that that is the nano banana image model that we were viewing just earlier. But great, that is now how those image models are used. Now, just so we can see how they translate to video, I just extended this to also use VO3 fast. And you can see we just have similar nodes in here. And so if we open this, you'll see that its output are MP4 video files. And if we view the sub execution here, you'll find that we're using VO3 fast via KAI as well, because right now they're offering the cheapest possible implementation for this at only 40 cents per 8 second video. And so if you want to deep dive for using VO3 fast in N8N, we've made a couple of lessons previously already on this topic. But this is just a good note because this actually illustrates why sub workflows in N8N are pretty useful. Since if you already have this sub workflow node set up on your side, what you can just do is copy them and paste them in any new workflow that you're building so that you don't have to manually set them up every time. But to wrap up our use case one, I think Seadream does better when it comes to UGC content just because of the fact that it can generate 9x16 images natively. And so when we animated these via VO3, these are the results. So TikTok made me buy this and it turns out it's the best sparkling wine in London and they have zero alcohol. And you know what? It's honestly really good. So I saw these on TikTok and I have to say it's the best sparkling wine in London and they have zero alcohol. And you know what? It's seriously really good. All right. So now the second use case we'll explore is a product modeling exercise. And for this one, we ask the models to create a landscape video where this character is modeling this dress. And these are the results. And you can see they're pretty similar in the way they look, especially if they're zoomed out like this. But if we zoom in and closely look at each of these images, what I actually found was that the face of the model for Nano Banana adheres more strongly to the original image that we passed. If we compare it with Sea Dream and just zoom in here, these are still pretty good, but somehow the more zoomed out it is and the smaller the face, the way the character's eyes are rendered seems to lose quality in terms of how good they are. So you can see here, for example, that how it's rendered here on the third image is not very ideal. And if you compare that to Nano Banana, it's just able to nail down the character's look very consistently across all the scenes. So I think for this one, if I were to go with one model to use, it would likely be Nano Banana in this case. We also animated them via VO3 and these are the results. The new Blossom Dress by Shopo now 50% off this Black Friday. The new Blossom Dress by Shopo, now 50% off this Black Friday. And now the third use case we'll show is changing styles between scenes. And here the task is quite simple. It's to take this image and change the style into that of Lego. And these are the results. And quite obviously, it's very clear that Sea Dream won this round because it's able to understand what they wanted and change not just the environment, but also the characters themselves as Lego characters. If you compare that to Nano Banana, I think it's struggled somewhat with a lot of these generations. They still look a bit Lego, but I think what Nano Banana is trying to do is to adhere more closely to the original image. And so it doesn't have the creative angle yet to produce almost entirely new images like Sea Dream did here. And so if you were to go for a model to use, it's probably going to be Sea Dream in this case. And when we animated those via VO3, these are the results. Now the fourth use case is going to be a character board. And for this one, what we're going to generate is a character board, which is basically a grid-based image that shows this character in different camera angles. And this is going to let us know which one of these models is best at rotating the scene and actually showing the same character across different angles, which will be useful for you to use as inputs whenever you have a consistent character that you want to generate images or videos for. And so when we use these models, these are the outputs. And just looking at them from afar, they actually look pretty similar. And so they both 
pretty much nailed this task, I would say. But again, if you were to zoom in, it does seem like Nano Banana is once again able to generate and render the faces with a bit more quality to it. And if you compare that with Sea Dream here at the bottom, it's able to capture the clothing perfectly. But if you just zoom in into the faces, particularly the eyes, it seems to be having trouble with that part specifically. And so for this use case, we'd probably go with Nano Banana as the winner. But with this character board, you can see how useful it would be as an input for your future generations, just so you can maintain consistency and show your character in different angles. Now, use case number five is around creating mock-ups of brand merchandise. And the task for this one is quite simple. We have this corporate logo and we just want to generate a few mock-ups of brand merchandise coming from this image. And you can read the full prompt that we passed here at the top because for this one, these two models actually generated two entirely different scenes. So you can see Sea Dream here was able to follow our instructions of creating a set of merchandise, placing them visually like it did here. However, with Nano Banana, it was only able to do that one out of three times on the third generation here. And for the first and second one, it seems to have defaulted to some sort of generic packaging, which is not the merchandise that we were after at all. So this tells me two things. One is we can probably improve our prompt if we want more consistent results. But number two, since we've tested this and we can see that Sea Dream is able to output our intention more consistently, then we'll probably go with Sea Dream for this one. And so if you need mock-ups of merch like caps or shirts, then using this new model is probably for you. And now the final use case are creating studio grade ads. And for this one, our picture of success is for these models to use this image reference of our product that we took a photo of and create an image ad out of it. And these are the results. And for both these image models, they actually did quite well. The adherence to the product are both very good, which is what's important in this case. But if you were to compare closely, it seems like the rendering of the product itself is a bit better in Nano Banana versus how it is in Sea Dream. So you can see this product, how it was placed in this ad. It seems like the lighting is a bit off versus the rest of the scene. I'm also not sure why consistently for Sea Dream, the shirt that it generated is too short for our model. So that's another point that is taking away from the quality of these ads for sure. But regardless, both of these models seem to be performing quite Quite well when it comes to this type of task. And so the best way for you to find out which one is best is for you to test it for your specific product. So overall, I think the introduction of Sea Dream is really good for the industry as a whole. It's great that we have two models now competing that are both very good and are really state of the art. And if you're using both of these models for automation, I do think Sea Dream does have its advantages. One being the fact that if you want to use a specific aspect ratio, you can do that natively in Sea Dream instead of relying on an external reframe model like with Nano banana. The slightly lower cost of Sea Dream is also an advantage. And the other advantage of Sea Dream is that it actually outputs higher resolution images. So if we zoom in on both of these, you can see the benefits of that a bit more clearly. So resolution may be something that matters to you. But like always, specific use cases may vary. So I suggest you just try them out first and see which one works best. And to do that, you can always use this model tester automation, which will probably update in the very near future, since OpenAI seems to be testing their new GPT-5 image generation model. So that may be coming soon as well. No formal announcement yet, but it does seem coming from Reddit conversations that this new model called Image Mini Alpha, maybe codenamed Strawberry, is going to be released soon. So we'll see how that goes and if it's actually going to be better versus Sea Dream and Nato Banana. But if you require this template and all future updates to it, you can just find that in the RoboNuggets community, along with dozens of other lessons around AI and automation here on the classroom. And here, our members, as well as myself, regularly post paid opportunities and partnership collaborations if you're interested in that. And we occasionally do industry leader events and master classes as well. So see if that's for you just in the link below. And if you found value in this video, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, because that helps us a lot to put out more content in this platform. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.